Hi everyone, I'm Lori Whitlock. Welcome to class today. We are recording live here from the Silhouette headquarters in Linden, Utah. And I'm so excited to be here teaching this class for Michaels and introducing all of you to more and working with you with the Silhouette cutting machine. Um, I have been designing cut files for Silhouette for the past 13 years. So I've been around for quite a long time and I have quite a few files in the online store. And I noticed this week we're having a 13 year birthday bash celebration going on right now. So there's a lot of celebrating going on here. All the files are on sale over in the design store and there's a lot of other fun sales and things going on. I believe Michaels has some machines and on sale and um, accessories, materials, things like that. So go check all of that out. Make sure you stock up. This is a good time. And definitely check out all the files in the online store because they're all on sale half price right now. So um, I'm gonna actually show you just a little bit about who I am and what I do. I'm gonna share my screen with you real quick. Um, I have a lot of resources for you. Um, let's see, gotta move something out of the way here on my screen. Um, I have a lot of resources for you in the Silhouette store. If you visit the um, artist tab, let's see here. Okay, artist tab. If you'll go to Lori Whitlock, you'll see that I've got quite a portfolio of files, fun 3D paper crafting projects. Um, some things are more flat, like um, vinyl type designs as well, or heat transfer things. Um, if you look over here on the left, you'll see that I've got about 10,000 different files in this store. So if you like the things that I design, I've got a YouTube channel that will help you put things together. Um, right here, we've got lots of tutorials, um, kind of like what we're going to do today here with Michaels. So make sure you are aware of those resources. Um, I've got an online shop. And if you go into that shop, you can see bigger pictures of things often, or the tutorials are linked right there. I've got a blog as well. Um, we just released today. We blog um, Monday through Friday, typically. We have lots of tutorials. We announce new products. We've got these cute Halloween files, super fun to cut. They're very intricate and really cute to decorate for our Halloween coming up. So there's just a lot of fun resources for you um, to help you with your crafting. So um, first of all, before we start working on our project today, um, you'll want to go into the design store, make sure that you download today's file. So go into the free section here. And if you'll scroll down just a little bit, you are going to find this free um, school bus card. That's the one we're going to be working on today. It's design ID number 213187. So this is such a fun and cute card to put together for teachers, school bus driver, maybe lunch, you know, helper or worker just as a thank you. And I'm going to show you today how to take this little back to school phrase here and change that to thank you teacher or something else like that. So for those of you joining, just make sure you go to the Silhouette Design Store and then look up design ID number 213187. And I will have Christina put that in the chat so that you can um, get that design ID number. So once you download that, you'll be able to go to your library in Silhouette Studio. And you'll be able to find that design in your library. It's called pop-up card, well, let's see pop-up card, pop-up box card school bus. So if once you get to your library, if you're like in all of your files and it's hard to find, you can go to the little search over here and go pop-up card. And it should show up here. You can see it over here on the right-hand side. You can click on that and it'll just bring it onto your screen. I actually already had it on my screen, so I'll put it on there again. But um, you'll want to bring that up so we can start working on this project today. And, and if you guys have any questions along the way, please be sure to just um, ask and I'll have Christina read the questions to me and I'll answer them here live. And if for some reason you're unable to watch the entire 
a show today or broadcast today, you can go and watch this on the Michaels YouTube channel within 24 to 48 hours. They'll have this posted so you can go back and rewatch or catch something you may have missed. So don't worry, it will be available later as well. Okay, do we have any questions up to this point? Is everybody clear on where to get the file and all that? We're good to go. Okay, so now that I have the file open on my screen, this is what it looks like. I have lots of other cards in this style. If you guys enjoy putting this one together, I actually brought those up here. There are, it's called a pop-up box card. Some people call them a Z-fold card, but I have lots and lots of styles of the same exact folding card. So once you learn this, technique or this fold, you'll be able to go and make any of these fun cards. There's some really great ones for Christmas and all the different holidays and sports and fall and whatever, lots of themes. So um, once you learn this, you'll be able to make all those. Okay, so I'm going to take these pieces and we're going to, first we're going to go ahead and edit this back to school. I just want to show you a quick technique. This is a print and cut piece and a lot of my files I include a print and cut component so that you can, you don't have to buy a, a ton of rubber stamps. You have a sentiment to use right inside the file. And one of my favorite features of the Silhouette machine is the ability to print and cut. It was a little intimidating when I first tried it. I mean, it took me a little while to try it, but once I tried it, I was completely hooked because it's just awesome. You can make labels, you can make, you know, all sorts of sentiments for cards and just you know you can make labels for your pantry whatever you can make lots of fun things with it so if you want to change the sentiment i always give you some sort of a design but it can always be changed so if you right click that piece and ungroup those pieces you can just take that back to school sentiment off you can even just delete it and you can grab the type tool here on the left and i'm just going to type out in the middle of the open. I'm gonna put my cursor down just by clicking and just type like, okay, my daughter has the best bus driver ever. So I'm gonna use that sentiment, best bus driver. Oops. Okay, so I'm just gonna go choose a font. Let's see, something kind of, or maybe. So I'm just going to color that so you can see it. I'm just going to go up here to the left hand little color section so I can change the fill color. And then I'm going to center it. This tool right here allows you to change the um, justification left or right or centered. And then if you'll go to your type tool over on the right hand side, this gives you even more control over your text and you can change the line spacing there. So you can bring it closer together, farther apart. So you can bring that a little bit closer together. Once you have it looking kind of the way you want, you can just grab that whole thing and resize it to fit on your label. Isn't that cool? So you could have this sentiment, say anything you want it to say. But I love the fact that there's this cute bus on it. And I thought this would be a perfect card for my daughter to give her amazing bus driver. So let's... Yep, so let's zoom in just a little bit here. And I'm gonna scoot over and I'm just gonna put down another text cursor right here and just say, let's say best teacher or thank you teacher. Oops, thank you teacher. This would be an awesome card for teacher appreciation. Don't know, that'll be coming up sometime, you know, during the school year this year. But up here in the top left-hand corner, you just select the little white and gray cross-hatching square. That is your fill color. And this right next to it, the red line, that is your stroke color. So just click that square and you can choose any of the colors here on the palette. And that just fills it with black. I'm choosing black. You could choose a different color if you wanted to. And then again, on the centering, just up here at the top, right there. And then you can scale. And if you wanna change the space between the letters, you've gotta open up this other text box over here on the right. And you can change that line spacing to be tighter. Okay. So well, let's just copy that. Oops, undo. 
we'll just copy that. I'm using command and the right arrow and I'm just making a copy of that circle right next to it. And then I'm gonna bring this thank you by um, teacher to the front by right clicking and then just bring to front. And then you can center it visually or I like even better to grab both pieces and use this little, um, little uh, icon right here at the top that's got the little center, the word says center underneath it. Um, if you click that, it'll just center the two pieces together. Sometimes when you do that, you need to like nudge it up just a little visually to, to get it exactly visual center. So that's how you change the, the sentiment. And let me show you really quick how to perform the print and cut. We'll do that part first. So this was the part that was just a little bit overwhelming when I first tried it, but it's really not that bad. Just go up to your page setup. Need to make sure you have your machine set. I'm using a Cameo 4 today. You could do this on a portrait or another machine that's bigger. Um, go down to your cutting mat. You'll want to make sure you're using the 12 by 12 cutting mat. That's what I'm using because um, I'm using the Cameo. And then media size, I'm going to use a letter piece of paper on my cutting mat. So it's going to go in that upper left hand corner, just like it looks on my screen there. But the, the main thing you need to do is that third icon over on their page setup menu. You need to click that. You need to turn on your registration marks. And then you need to make sure all of your pieces, I'm going to group them together so I can't move them around or mess them up. Just command G or control G if you're on a PC. Um, and just move those into the area that doesn't have any of that gray cross hatching. Can you see that? If, if it's in that area, the optical eye on your Cameo will see it and it will mess up your cut. So just make sure you're outside and you know, out of that area. And those dark, the black square and the corners that you see there are going to print when you print out your paper. And that's what your Cameo or your portrait is gonna see to figure out exactly where to cut those circles. So it's gonna go and check those spots when we go to cut. And I'll show you that here in a minute when we go to cut it. So um, any questions on how to set this up and change the sentiment? Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and move on to cutting it out. I've actually already got a paper that I've set up with different phrases on them. I did back to school. Thank you, teacher, you're the best. Thanks for being the best bus driver. So you would go ahead and print this to your printer. So up at the top, you'll see a little printer icon. You'll hit print and that'll bring up your print screen. And then you would go ahead and hit print and tell it what printer you wanna send it to and, and print it. Once it comes off the printer, you're gonna have a printed sheet of paper that looks like this. So this is what it's gonna look like. Ooh, I have lots and lots of fonts that I love to use. Um, not really. <laughs> I, I, I mean, as you can tell on this sheet of paper, I've got four different fonts, but yeah, I just love fonts a lot. There's a ton of them in the Silhouette store. I've got a lot of them too. So it just depends on the look you're going for and what you're trying to create. So once you have your paper printed out, you're ready to put that on a cutting mat. So I've got my mat here. And I'm going to line it up just like it looked in my software in that upper left hand corner. Oops, make sure it's as straight as you can get it. Okay, once you've got it loaded on your mat, let's see. Once you have it loaded on your mat, we'll go ahead and load it into our machine. You can see that my machine has the roller bars set to a skinnier media. So I'm going to release that and move over that roller and just set it up and then make sure you lock it again. Set it up for a, a, a 12 inch width. Actually, I need to move it over even one more notch. So you just push that little lock in and then you can feel it click into place. And go ahead and make sure that that bar is locked or else it won't grab your cutting mat properly. Line it up here with this gray line on the left-hand side. Let's see, can you see that? This gray line right here on the machine. And then go ahead and put your um, mat into the machine. And we're gonna go back to the software. 
and I'll show you how to get that scent. Let's see. Okay, we'll go to the scent panel. That's that fourth um, tab across the top there. And the one thing you'll need to make sure that you do is I'm, I'm just going to press cut so you can see what it looked like originally. You see how everything is red around each and every letter. You don't want to cut with all of those turned on. You want to make sure that you just select cut edge so that it only cuts those bright red circles. So that's super important. I have accidentally sent it before with all those letters being cut out and it turns into a big bad mess. So make sure you get cut edge selected. Make sure you select your, your machine. Um, I'm hooked up to a Cameo here. And then you wanna make sure you set your material to the correct material. And I'm printing on a pretty heavy um, cardstock. So I'm just gonna go to the, I'm gonna say textured heavy cardstock just to make sure that it cuts through this all the way. Um, that puts my machine on a three, it's gonna go on a pass one time, it's only gonna cut one time, force of 30. I'm gonna actually bump that up just a little bit. And I'm gonna take the speed up just a little bit and go ahead and hit send. Now the machine is gonna go and check out those optical little, it's got an optical eye in it. It's gonna check out the corners, make sure it knows the position of the paper on the mat. Then it's gonna set the blade. Then it's gonna cut around those circles. If you guys are new to Silhouette, the software, the machine, and you need a little extra support or help, I believe Kelly Wayment has a class coming up with Michaels here in two weeks that um, is a little bit more basic. So you could learn some basic techniques. I always test my cut, make sure it cut cleanly before I remove my mat from my machine because I could always send it again, as long as I don't unload it. Um, it's cutting perfectly though. So I'm gonna go ahead and unload that. And we have these awesome little labels here that will be perfect for our card. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and unload that paper from my mat. Look how awesome those look. You guys, I, I actually have a black and white just laser printer that I typically like to print these type of sentiments on. It just prints in forever. Like I don't have to change the ink very often and it prints really clean and neat. So we have our labels ready to go for our card. Now we just need to cut the rest of the card out. And on video, I'm probably going to um, just cut a few of the pieces because I have pre-cut all of the other pieces. So I'll just show you kind of how I set up my files to cut. Um, and let's just go, I'm just gonna start a new screen. I'm gonna set up my page setup to be 12 by 12 instead of the letter. And I'm just gonna go to my library and grab that bus card and bring it in new. Yes. Oh, I need to share my screen so you guys can see this. I'm so sorry. Let me get my screen shared real quick. Okay, I'm gonna, I'll start over on that part. Sorry about that. So I, we're just gonna bring up that bus card. So I'm gonna go to my library and bring that onto my screen. And there's quite a few pieces as you can see. And usually what I like to do is just pull everything off to the left and ungroup it. So right click and ungroup those pieces. And I do not need to cut this back to school piece again. So I'm just gonna go ahead and delete it off my screen so I don't worry about it. And then I like to bring on, and oops, looks like I need to ungroup one more time. I like to bring on the like pieces like that match the color. So I bring all the red pieces on. And then you can also like, so you could load on your mat. You can see the, the grid lines here on your mat. So you can see that that's eight inches down here. So if you had a seven and a half inch piece of paper that's 12 inches wide or 
Yeah, a little bit, um, yeah, a little wider than 11. So you need a 12 inch by seven and a half inch. Um, you could cut the red on that and then you could put a four inch piece down in here, four inch by 12 inch and put some other pieces down there. So maybe we grab like the yellow pieces and put those down here. And then you could send all of that to cut so you can make less passes if you want to. Um, that's totally up to you. That's something I like to do sometimes. However, this time I do have a full 12 by 12 sheet of red paper. So I'm gonna go ahead and just put that on my mat and get that cut out. So I'm gonna grab my, my physical mat and set it up. Uh -oh. Let's see, stop share, there we go. Okay, just grab my physical mat and put my red cardstock on there. And just line that up with the sticky area of the mat. Press it down good and feed that into my machine. If you have a brand new mat, sometimes it feels pretty sticky uh, for those first few cuts. So you can kind of de-stickify the mat if you want to, or just cut larger pieces of cardstock on it at first. Um, that is a good way to um, get your, your mat where it doesn't hang on to your cardstock so well, so, so hard. Okay, I'm gonna share my screen with you again. And okay, here's our mat all set up with our red pieces. And we're gonna go ahead and hit send. And you'll wanna make sure you have your settings all set up properly. Make sure that the red cut lines are bright. You can see the dashed lines through here. That's where our card is gonna fold. So we wanna make sure those are there. If you ungroup too many times, those will come apart from your card and you don't want them to move their position. So make sure that those stay grouped and with the card. And then we have our apple piece. And then we don't need to change the cut or cut edge. It's already looks right to me. I am gonna cut it on that textured heavy cardstock setting again. And again, I'm gonna bump that up just a little bit on the pressure and the speed and go ahead and hit send. You can see that the machine is cutting out that big main card base piece. And the apple. And it's got one more line of um, the fold to cut perforation. Okay, and then I'm gonna test that. Okay, you guys, this one did not cut all the way through. This is a little bit heavier cardstock. So before I unload that, I'm gonna go back to the software and I'm gonna get this ready to send one more time. So this is actually good for you guys to see this. Even, you know, me, I've been cutting cardstock for 13 years. Sometimes just depending on the blade or the thickness of the cardstock, I don't even get the numbers perfect every time. So I'm gonna bump that up to a four on the blade depth. And we're gonna just send that again and see how it goes. So it's gonna go through all of that again. Hopefully we get a nice clean cut. So this is why it's so important not to unload your mat. Then you won't waste your cardstock if, if you don't get a clean cut all the way through. Sometimes I get a little impatient and start checking it. Yep, it's gonna be good this time. Okay, so yeah, that apple piece comes right off, no problems. And it looks like this long piece has a nice clean cut as well. So I'm gonna unload that from my machine. And just peel that off. And holding your cardstock flat on the table as you peel the mat away will help keep that cardstock nice and flat rather than letting it curl. So, there's our card base and there's our little apple cut out perfectly. So I'm just gonna kind of, I'm not gonna cut out any more of the pieces together. So you guys will just have to work on that at home. Um, and if you need to watch the replay later, you can. But at this point, I would just move those pieces off to the right or delete them from the file to kind of keep myself organized. And then I would move on say all the black pieces and or the you know whatever 
whatever color you want to work on next, go ahead and move those on and get those cut. Oh, there's this, I'm like, where's the gray piece? Here it is. I can hardly see it. This is a really important piece. Yes. Okay. I've got to share that screen again, you guys. Okay. Okay. So, um, like I said, I like to move all those, the red pieces off to the side, get them out of the way. I've already cut those and just move on the next colors. So black pieces could gather up up here. This gray strip's really important. This is um, where the bus is gonna sit on that strip that goes across the card, kind of helps the mechanism. Um, so go ahead and pull those on, get those all cut out. I do wanna show you one other little thing. Um, might be a helpful tip for you to learn. You'll notice on these wheels, they're pretty little. And on the original card, I got beautiful, nice, clean cuts. It, it works fine. But if you're trying to mass produce something and you wanna simplify a file or you see something in the design store that you just, you wanna cut it smaller or scale it down and it's just gonna to be too small to cut. This is a really great example of, um, I'm gonna show you how to get rid of those holes. So I'm gonna show you as I pull this piece across here, you can see that those holes are cut through these little wheel pieces. If you wanna get rid of those, you can't just ungroup them. I'm gonna right click and ungroup. And you're gonna see that that just ungroups the two wheels from each other. If I right click and ungroup again, I can't get those holes to go away unless I do something called release a compound path. So you're gonna grab that piece, go up to object and down to release compound path, or you can right click and find the option as well. So you can grab those tiny little holes and just delete them one by one. This is just a handy skill to have um, as you're needing to edit files. So then you can right click and make that compound path again. And I want you to think of like this compound path is like a hole punch. Right now it's just two circles sitting on top of each other. I'm gonna undo that and put it back. But if you make a compound path, it is literally punching a hole through it like a hole punch would. So can you see that? And that hole is not gonna move. You can't ungroup it. You can't get it to move unless you again, release that compound path. So that's, that's a handy technique or a thing to know as you're trying to edit files. So hopefully that's helpful to you guys as you're working with silhouette files. So um, then you would just go ahead and get everything else cut out. I'll just go back to, we could see the whole screen. Okay. Go ahead and cut everything out and we'll start assembling our card. Any questions about getting it cut out or, okay. Okay, the thickness of cardstock. Let's see. The thickness of this exact paper, I believe it's an 80 pound cover. So anywhere between a 65 and hundred pound cover is what I like to use. Um, but this is pretty thick. So this is probably about an 80 pound. Maybe, could, I don't think it's 100. Okay, any other questions? Okay, all right. I'm gonna go ahead and move my computer out of the way. We'll get out all of our pieces. Okay, so this card does have a fair amount of pieces in it, but that's what makes it so dang cute. And here's those tiny little wheels. They're pretty small, so don't lose those. Okay, so I'm gonna show you the original card just here. So you can see where, what our goal is. This main red piece is gonna be folded like a Z. So we're just gonna take, and I'll leave this kind of sitting here so you can see it as we work. Put it over here in the corner. Okay, so I'm gonna take that main card piece, base piece first, and just fold it like a Z. So I'm gonna find that score line, and the next score line, and there we have it. Let's see. I don't have my bone folder with me, but I have my little spatula. So I'll just use that. 
I like to use something to press those seams so that they look really nice and crisp. That's one of the best things you can do when you're paper crafting is make sure you have nice, crisp, clean lines. Okay, so you can see this piece here is this piece right here. So you're gonna fold this in a Z as well, but you're gonna fold this direction on this line and this direction on this line. And then we're gonna glue them together, but we're only gonna put glue in this area and in this area here. We wanna leave this, these two surfaces free of adhesive, okay? So let's see. I'm gonna grab my tape runner and have it handy. Um, before we can add this piece, we have to add our covering panels. So let's put our blue piece here. And we've got a couple more of them over here. Let's see, here and here. So they're gonna go in those sections and there should be about an eighth of an inch gap all the way around each piece for a mat. So we'll just take that and add some adhesive to the back of it. And just go ahead and press that in place and do the same thing with the next two panels. Okay, so that's the basic card base right there. So that and then this piece is, if you can do this part, you can make any of my pop-up box card files. So, and then the rest of it is basically just, you know, decoration, putting on all the pieces in the right layers. So um, you'll want to have this edge perfectly flush against the side, just like that. And just make sure it's nice and straight on there. And then this area here is where we're gonna put the glue just right behind here. So you just wanna be careful not to go past like this area. I'm just marking that with my fingernail for a second. And then you don't wanna come up into this area either. So just stay down in this lower section. So about like this. And then I'm gonna lay it all flat. And there we have it. Perfect. So this card is gonna fit in, I'm gonna actually pull it up and move it down just a little bit because when it folds, it's not perfectly straight. There we go. Okay, right there. So it might be easier to, before you push it down really hard to fold it and make sure that your line lines up down here at the bottom perfectly. This is all gonna fit inside of a six by six envelope, just so you can see that. And if you don't have a six by six envelope, there are some square envelopes in the Silhouette store that you can get and make to fit this in. Okay, so now we're ready to start embellishing this. Let's we'll start with our school bus. So we have a school bus base layer. It's gonna go right in that space. So I'm just gonna assemble it off of the card real quick. Um, we've got a white layer. This section comes down where the doors are here. So make sure you get that on this front end of the bus. And we've got the yellow layer. that's going to layer right on top of that. And then we have our wheels. Pretty simple. I try really hard when I'm designing files to make them as simple as possible for you to put together rather than gluing on little tiny black pieces here and there or everywhere. I just try to have them cut through. So let the machine do the work, right? Why not? That's what it's for. Okay, some of these smaller pieces, I'm probably gonna switch over to a liquid adhesive here in just a moment. But get this one put down. Oh, 
I might need to get my glasses on too. These pieces are getting smaller and smaller every year. Anybody else have that problem? Okay, so I am gonna just use a liquid adhesive for this real quick. There's lots of different ways to use um, for liquid adhesives. I even have these little bottles I do like to use sometimes too that have a pointy nose on them. Or you can just get a little, a stick or something that's already got a pointed little tip on it. And I'm going to try and get a little adhesive in between those layers. I also really like this pick me up tool for picking up smaller pieces. It's a nice silhouette tool. You can grab things and get them flipped over without getting your fingers all messy. So line that right up. I am going to break out the glasses. <laughs> okay. We, we can get things lined up just right. Okay, there's our school bus and I am going to just give it a little bit of pressure. In fact, you can take it and set it underneath something heavy for just a minute if you want to while you move on to other pieces. That way that liquid adhesive has a minute to dry. Um, this one's a tacky glue, Eileen's. That's what this one is. Oh, I got quite a bit of glue on that one. So I'm going to grab my other wheel and try and transfer some of that glue onto here. Okay. It was enough glue for both. Okay. Put those wheels down. Okay. I'm going to let that just dry for a few minutes off to the side. That's what our little bus looks like when it's all done. Okay, we'll let that dry. And then we've got some other strips to add to our little border here. So let's go ahead and get those put on. Now would be a good time to add those. And then we have two inserts here for the side. And you'll notice they're numbered one and two. Your machine should cut those numbers out for you. Um, that's the order that they're gonna stack in here inside. If you'll notice, those are little crossbars here inside of our card. And they're just gonna glue on those glue tabs on the sides here. But we need to put our little embellishments on them before we get to that point. So we'll work on those after we get our little road in place here. So I'm gonna use my tape runner on this part. If you'll notice, this card is made from all solid card stocks. Um, I have the Recollections, Michael's brand is a great card stock brand. I really like using, they have lots of beautiful colors. I buy those in their multi-packs. Those are really nice, um, but you could also get creative and add some pattern paper. I mean, wouldn't this be adorable with a blue sky type paper in the background or a little um, school pattern? I like to use pattern paper um, very purposefully and very, you know, in sparingly. I don't want to like make everything too busy with tons and tons of it everywhere, but placing it purposefully and cute tone on tones are really cute. Like this apple would be darling and like a little check or something. The blue would be cute in a little sky or a really a subtle school pattern or something like that. So get creative, make, make these cards your own. Okay. We're gonna go ahead and make sure your number one and your number two are facing you and they're on the right hand side before you start putting these together. But we've got our pencil. It's gonna be a yellow layer. I'll just open that up so you can see it, a yellow layer there. Then we've got our darker yellow layer on the side. And then we have our pencil wood color here. And there should be a tiny triangle right here. So that's gonna to put together our little pencil. Um, oh, and we need the metal part. 
and the pink part, the eraser. Okay, so let's go ahead and get that one put together. So again, this is our base layer and it will just glue right on the black. So we will go ahead and just put it together off to the side. So let's take our yellow and get those layered together first. Um, I think a teacher would absolutely love getting this card because it would be something they could display put on their in their room for decoration. It's definitely not your average card. Okay, if you'll notice there's a tiny bit of inking on the edges of these to help them stand out just a little bit. Um, you can use just distressing inks to add um, a little bit of, and you'll notice here, especially on the clouds, you can see that little bit of blue inking edge. I didn't actually bring my ink with me today, but if you have any ink pads in your uh, stash of product or you can get them at Michael's, you can use them to distress the edges just a little bit. And I really like to use the tone on tone look when I do that. It just adds a little bit of flare, I guess, a little bit of um, just accents those pieces. Okay, we'll put that together. I've got to wipe off a little extra glue there. Okay. And we'll go ahead and put our lead and our wood. Oh, I got a lot of glue on there. Let me just grab a, I need a little piece of paper to just spread glue with. Okay. Sometimes when you get too much glue, you just got to grab a scrap of paper and spread things around the way you want them. So I think there's actually enough glue on there to use for this piece. So I'll just kind of dip it in that and put it down where I want it. And then we have that pencil lead piece that goes right there. Okay, I'm gonna pick that up real quick and move things around before they dry too much. Get them right where I want them. Okay. And then I'm just gonna set that aside with our school bus and let it dry for just a minute before I touch it anymore. And we'll work on our apple. The apple is much more simple. We have our base piece that's brown and the red and then the green leaf. So we'll just make sure you like get the apple oriented the right way. Notice how the stems here on the left, just make sure everything's laying the right way before you glue things together. Cause guess what I've done in the past. I have definitely put things together upside down and backwards before and it's no fun. So then you have to go recut pieces. Um, I do show that technique in a few of my YouTube videos. I'm not sure right off the top of my head which video it is. If they want to email us at info at lauriewhitlock.com, I can have, um, I can locate that and send it to her or have my assistant help do that. But um, that is a good idea. I should probably um, do a specific video for inking, but I have shown that technique on some of my card cards that I've made on there. So it's just pretty simple. I can even kind of demonstrate it without an ink pad. Oh, look at our apple is just trying to curl up. I'm gonna have to put that under something heavy for a minute. So sometimes liquid adhesive, um, is harder on larger pieces. I like it on smaller pieces for sure. So maybe I should have used tape runner on the apple, depending on your glue. Um, I'm gonna set this under something heavy for just a moment. And get that to flatten out nicely. 
Okay, now we have our sentiment and our clouds. So these clouds, um, they do have a little inking on. So if I had an ink pad here, I would just take my ink pad and just kind of brush it along the edges of those pieces. It's really quite simple. So you can just use it as little or as much as you like. I did blue on these pieces, but typically I do more of a tone on tone look just to kind of highlight the edges. So yeah, that's, that's what I typically do. Okay, we have our sentiment. We have back to school, but we also cut several new sentiments here. So we have our thanks for being the best bus driver. So my daughter, Ashlyn, she has the cutest bus driver that just loves her. So I think she is going to give her this card when we're done. So I'm gonna use that one today. But you have lots of options and you know how to change your sentiment to whatever you would like now. So I'm just gonna go ahead and glue this one down. So just center that. And then sometimes it's fun to use a little pop dot or something to give it a little bit of dimension. So I have some, doesn't matter what kind, just some little foam dot of some sort. Um, I'm just gonna put that right in the middle of the sentiment. And I'm just gonna leave the backing on that so I can stick that down where I want to and when I'm ready. Okay, so let's grab our school bus. Set that card here. Get our school bus piece, and we're going to go ahead and put it right here. So this is a nice big piece, so I'm going to use some tape runner. Just layer that right over that um, Cut out. So on that strip, I've given you that cutout so you know right where to line it up. You it makes it nice and easy for you. Okay, now we're ready to put our inserts in here. So those tabs are going to fold backwards. And you can fold them both backwards. You can fold the front one forwards and the back one backwards. But basically, I've given you the spacing to make them equal distance apart from each other. So on this one, we folded them forward and then backwards back here. Doesn't really matter though. They should be about equal distance because of the spacing on these. So don't stress too much about that. You can go either direction. I like to use tape runner on larger pieces and I like to use the glues on smaller pieces. Um, unless sometimes you do want to test out your tape runner and make sure that it lasts. Um, I have had some projects with tape runner come apart. So if you're doing something that you want to be very permanent, like maybe um, a village or something, and you just want glue is great for all of those glue tabs. I just use glue. So that's something to keep in mind how long you want the project to last, but glue is quite permanent. It's also less forgiving as you, it can glue things down quicker. Okay, so our number two is gonna go in the back here. So I'm gonna literally push it all the way to the back of the card. You can see where it's touching the blue part back here. And then it's just gonna glue down on the two sides. So I'm just gonna put adhesive on the outside of those two glue tabs and then put it in place. Okay, get those two tabs and you kind of want to pull them in a little tighter than you need them for a second just to get it in there. And then this is the trickiest part of the whole card. Just I like to line it up at the top of this and push it all the way to the back. So that's kind of and then press that glue tab down. And then typically that other side will when you lay it down flat, we'll just glue right into place, but be careful. See, mine just went a little crooked. So hold on, I gotta pull it back up. Just make sure you keep it right in line with this strip right here. So it doesn't hang out above or below, okay? So now it should fold flat because I put it together while it was flat. So 
you can kind of press it once you fold it and stuff to get it to, to glue down nicely. So that, that one's in place. Now we just need to do our, our front one, number one. And our apple is now dried and nice and flat. So that's good. And I'm just gonna add some adhesive to that. So this stem is a good example. It's just too hard to put it, you know, adhesive up there, but if you wanna glue that down really good, just add a little bit of liquid. Okay. We'll put our apple right there. So cute. And again, we're just gonna put adhesive on those two side tabs. Now this is where you need to decide, are you gonna push them back or forward? Doesn't matter too much. The spacing's gonna be, that's what it looks like if it's towards the back. If you wanna look down in there and see some more of the blue border, you might wanna push those forward so that it just has a little more open look down in there. Hopefully you can see that. So I am gonna push them forward. So just make sure you know which way you wanna go before you put your adhesive on. And get the adhesive on the right side. And once again, I'm gonna line it right up with the front edge of this, um, the road, you know, this section here of that band and then glue that down and right along the top here, make sure it's flush across the top. And then pull that other tab in and line up where it's nice and straight. And then I'm gonna lay it down again and just press it down. Okay, our card folds flat. That's good, we got it nice and straight. So we've basically put most of this card together. Now you get to get creative and decide where you wanna put your clouds. You can follow my pattern exactly. You can put your sentiment here. You could put your sentiment here. Um, just play around with these. You could put pop dots on the clouds. Let's see, I think I'll put a cloud there and maybe one back there. Um, I don't think I'll pop dot, well, maybe I will. I'm gonna pop dot this one cloud up front. This is totally up to you, depending on how thick you want your card to be. I think it would be cute to add a little more dimension. I love dimension on cards. Just make some really pop. Ah. I'm peeling off that layer on the pop dot. We'll just place that down right in here. And I think on this one, I'm just gonna put adhesive. We've already got the thanks for being the best, best bus driver. That's on a pop dot already. And the last cloud, we'll just go ahead and glue that one down as well right in here. And then we've got our sentiment. Let's go ahead and peel the backing off of that. Sometimes the backing is just so hard to get under there. Okay. And there we have it. Thanks for being the best bus driver. I love it so much. And back to school. And any other sentiment you wanted to create? I mean, you could do teacher appreciation. You're the best. Thank you, teacher. Those are some of the other ones we made. So does anybody have any questions for me? I am always available at info at lauriewhitlock.com if you have any questions. Um, either me or my team will reach out and help you um, with anything that you need. With our files, um, we have an extensive YouTube channel with lots and lots of tutorials. So you can put together more fun projects like this. Any questions for us, Christina? Not yet. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much, you guys. I appreciate you joining me today. Thank you to Michaels for hosting this and for Silhouette for having me here in the studio. I just absolutely love Silhouette. I've been um, an avid fan since they 
um, started the company and I'm thankful to be part of it and to design awesome cut files for all of you. Thank you to everybody who buys my files and makes these fun projects with me. Love you guys and I'll see you in another class. Bye-bye.